started a few hours after my girlfriend and I came back from eating a fancy dinner at this new French place downtown. We shared some boiled oysters and escargot with garlic breadsticks and chicken panini. I had just prepared to kiss her goodnight when I felt my stomach churn. I tried my hardest to keep it down, but nothing stopped the yellow slime from hitting her square in the face and dripping down her neck. Motherfucker! Shelly screamed as she pulled back and was about to upchuck herself. Fuck, I am so sorry. Are you okay? I asked as I felt my stomach twist again. She replied, yeah, I can wash it off, as she was wiping the vomit for her face. I apologized again and stumbled into the car. It happened again on the way home. I tried to pull over to the side of the road, and more of my dinner came up and cascaded all over my steering wheel. I sat there in my car, struggling to breathe for a few good minutes, wondering if the sensation would hit again. It had to be food poisoning. I remember thinking that the chicken wasn't all that done. That thought changed when I made it home and my roommate came to greet me. This time, I was vomiting blood and it wasn't in small amounts. The minute I stepped in the door, I was choking up large bits of blood and some sort of black sludge. I looked down at the carpet where I had just spit up the slime and then realized that there was something different about it. It looked like it had a heartbeat. What the hell? Dean asked as he stepped away. I started to move. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know. I said desperately as I felt another twist in my stomach and ran towards the bathroom. I stood near the toilet and let more of the black purple mush pool into the pool. It stunk to high heavens like rotting maggots. Then I realized that there were maggots in the toilet. They were writhing and screeching in the toilet, trying to wriggle their way out as I stared into the mirror and opened my mouth wide. Blood caked inside my mouth and it looked like black pus was dripping out of my mouth. Something was growing in the sores that were forming in my cheek. I screamed and ran back to Dean. He was using a fire extinguisher on the slime that had moved into the kitchen where it seemed to be getting bigger. It was just a vat of slime but at the same time, it wasn't anymore. It was growing, and it looked like it had limbs. Then Dean's eyes widened in the horror when he saw my face. I couldn't stop it from happening again. I vomited up a long stretch of nerve-like wires that hit the floor with a plop. It was brown like feces and pulsing like a Christmas tree. I ran from my apartment into the street. I couldn't stop the pain. I walked straight into an oncoming car just for relief. When I woke up, Dean had taken me to the ER. We didn't talk about the apartment because we never went back. The doctor explained that they had managed to extract at least 23 microorganisms from my body mostly in my mouth and throat. I would need surgery on my esophagus and likely have the liquid replaced in my upper lips for at least a month. They showed me samples of a small dark bacteria that they had extracted from my teeth, explaining that the reason I was vomiting was my body was rejecting the toxic organism, apparently hurling had saved my life. I hadn't thought of it much, except for when Shelly called me last week. She wanted a second date, despite all that I had put her through. She wanted to go back to that French restaurant. This time, I'm ordering a fucking salad. Number two. So, my name is Jerry, and I have two younger siblings a 
five-year-old and a three-year-old. Well, one night, my parents decided to go out and have some fun and left me alone with my two younger siblings. At around 5 p.m., I put on a movie for them and went upstairs to listen to my music. Now, 7.50 p.m. is when shit started getting weird. I was watching television, and I heard this blood-curdling shriek. I rushed downstairs to find my little sister vomiting. But it wasn't regular vomit. This shit was an unnatural shade of pitch black. Its very presence unsettled my little brother, who at the time of my sister's regurgitation was shaking uncontrollably. When I asked her what happened, all she said was he did it. But she wasn't pointing at my little brother. She was pointing at the television, which was off. I tried asking my little bro, but he didn't make a sound. Not even a silent gasp for air. Just an unwavering glare of terror, like something bled him dry of his innocence. I rushed upstairs to grab a jar so that I could dispose of the black ooze. At this point, I'm losing my shit. My heartbeat is all over the place. Sweat leaks down my face like a fucking rainstorm. Occasionally, I glance towards the non-lit areas of the home to make sure no one was recently looking at me. But I swear to God, I saw someone. When I went back into the basement, the TV's on. But it ain't on Hallmark. A young lady with black hair was on the television screen. Her draping black locks dropped down to the floor, concealing her line of sight. But she walks towards the screen, trembling with each step. You could see the amount of effort she had to put into each movement, as if each step was her very last. She's about one foot away from the television screen at this point, and me fearing for my life, I grasp for the remote, only to realize it won't turn off. Now, consider for a moment the possibility of a paranormal entity is trying to get out of this television, is trapped, and it who knows what it wants or what it'll do if it escapes. And that's when I had my first panic attack. I just dropped to the floor, crying and struggling for breath. Before she can escape the confines of her screen, I hear a click. Mom and Dad are home, and the TV flickers off, as if their very presence of, per- of a paternal figure is enough to drive whatever beast this thing was. My little brother runs upstairs with tears in his eyes. I stay with my little sister to make sure none of the vomit is still in the carpet. It's now 11.50, and I'm about to go to bed. But when I lay down, my mouth begins to salivate uncontrollably, and my head is burning. I head to the bathroom just in case I need to throw up. And guess what color it was? Black. Now excuse the informal language. I just like to lighten things up when recalling traumatic paranormal experiences. Update. No, she is not the lady from The Ring, unless that bitch is real too. When the darkness comes alive, there's nowhere you can hide.